I'm going to start with the command line. The command line is a very important place in the program. You're going to do a lot of things. You're going to spend a lot of time here at the command line. Um, very clean and simple, but uh, a lot of powerful features behind it. I'm going to right click on the command line uh, context menu. So I'm going to open up the context menu. Notice there are a lot of items here. We're not going to talk about all of these things. We are going to talk about a number of them. Uh, one at the top here that is going to be important for you is command line examples. These here examples here are going to show you how to conduct various searches. Because I will guarantee you're not going to remember all the different types of searches that I talk about here. So keep in mind that this, these examples are here. So when you're trying to construct a search and say, you know, how do I do that? That's a great place to start because it's probably addressed here in one form or another. So you can see there's lots of examples, English examples, uh, dealing with what we call wild cards, which we'll talk about later. Uh, there's Greek examples. Uh, down here we're going to find Hebrew examples as well. Um, so lots of things. Also, this is where your command line shortcuts are going to be found also, which we'll talk about shortcuts in a little bit as well. So, and search limits also, how to find a search limit, which we'll talk about. So that uh, command line examples page, which you get right here, to click, you right click, command line examples. That's an important place to, to remember. Okay. Um, before we get into using the command line, we're gonna be typing things on the command line, and what's a quick and easy way to clear the command line, and to go to the command line. Say I'm, I'm doing work here in the, uh, say the analysis window, I click in the analysis window. A quick way to get back to the command line is to hit the escape key. I hit escape, and if there's something in there, hit it again, and it clears the command line. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go and uh, search, I just double clicked on Strong's number here. So I have something there in the command line. Now I want to clear it, I'm going to hit the escape key. And now it's clear and I'm ready to enter something on the command line. So that's one of the shortcuts, the escape key. Really useful, brings you back to it, hit it again, clears it, and you're ready to, ready to type. Okay. Um, a number of other things here in the command line, we'll talk about some of these, though not all of them. Um, the, uh, you can save command lines and load them. So say you want to have a, you have a long type of search and you want to save it for later, you can do that. Probably won't use it very much, but every once in a while it's nice to be able to do that. Uh, we'll talk about inserting the low and nida Greek, key, or, I'm sorry, Greek English semantic domains. We'll talk about that. Um, searching on word lists. You can create word lists and bot words. You can search on word lists. Um, there is something here called the code insertion buttons. I click that, and notice now I have a number of, of codes here. These are buttons here. We're going to talk about those right now. So you may want to actually see those. You right click, context menu, and then here's the code insertion buttons. Select that, display that. When you are wanting to change verses, this, the uh, command line is a great way to do that. Right now I'm at Genesis 1.4. Say I want to go to Hebrews 2.8. Mm -hmm. I'm going to type the abbreviation for Hebrews, which in almost all cases is the three-letter abbreviation. I'm going to type H-E-B space three space eight. I don't have to type periods, colons, semicolons, commas, anything like that. You can in some cases, but you don't have to. And just hit enter. And now my browse window has Hebrews 3.8. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a very simple way then to change your, your verses. Now I'm going to hit the escape key and go back to the command line. And now say I want to go to Hebrews 4.2. Well, it's very simple. I'm just going to type 4 space 2 and hit enter. It already assumes book of Hebrews because I didn't change it. Now say I want to go now to verse, verse 5, type 5 and hit enter. Now I'm in Hebrews 4.5. It already assumes the book and the chapter. Okay. So, but very fast to get to these different things. So soon you'll be just typing things and moving around here. And uh, um, judges, though, J D G. So that's a, that's one of the exceptions. Uh, books that have uh, like like First Corinthians is just one C O. Um, like Second Samuel's two S A. Okay, so you can see the kind of the patterns of how these things work. 
Now, say you forget what the abbreviations are, especially if you want to go into something, say, the Apocrypha, for example. You can't remember what are those abbreviations. Well, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to bring in the uh, New Revised Standard Version, that's going to have the Apocrypha also. Um, remember how you would do that? Well, you can go up here under where the versions are, and you can go to English, and I can select the NRS, and go down through my list here. There it is, okay. NRS, that's one way of doing it. There's another way of doing it. I'm going to go to the command line. Since I now know the abbreviation for it, and you get used to the abbreviations for the different books, it's, it's almost always, so not exclusively, the three, a three-letter abbreviation. In this case, it's NRS, New Revised Standard, and hit Enter. And now, the NRS is displaying in the browser window. It also is, at the top here, that is what's called my search version. So if I click on the browse, <coughs> the browse mode, I'm going to have the new revised standard version here. Okay. So if I don't remember, how do I get to, um, what is the abbreviation for Judith in the Apocrypha? If I can't remember what that is, I'm going to come down here to the NRS. I'm going to place my cursor right over the three-letter abbreviation. That gives me information about the version. I'm going to hold down my shift key, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to scroll to the bottom. And it shows me what books are in this version and the abbreviations for them. Okay, notice here's Judges, J-D-G. So if you forget what that is, it's going to show you there. And I'm going to look down through my list, and the Apocrypha is at the end. Okay, you have your Hebrew Bible, your, your Greek New Testament, and then you have your Apocrypha. That's how these versions are constructed. Okay, so that's how you want to look through the list of these. So it's Hebrew Bible, Greek New Testament, and then we come down after the book of Revelation. Here's Tobit, Judith, J-D-T. There it is. Okay, so now that's what I want, J-D-T. So I'm going to go back up here to the command line. J-D-T, 1, 1, hit enter, and there you have. Well, now what happened to my, my Hebrew text? Why is that gone? Notice I, I had a Hebrew Bible here in the browser window. Where did it go? Still there, just not showing. Still there, you just have to put the tab and change the version. Why don't I have Hebrew for Judah? It was written in Greek or something. It's not Greek. There's no Hebrew text. <laughs> so yes, but so as you switch to different different books, you're not going to display it. I it did not mean that the Hebrew Bible is removed. If I go back here and I go back to Genesis once again, there's my Hebrew text once again. Okay. Okay, so it didn't disappear. I mean, it's not removed, it just is not displaying because there is no Hebrew of the book of Judah. So, so that your contents in the browse window are going to change depending on what you're trying to display. Okay, so don't be, don't be fearful, you know, when something's not like it used to be. Um, it'll come back when you go to the right locations.